Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to use the patch function in Power Apps to complete your approval processes. By the end of this video, hopefully you'll learn the basics of when it comes to patching and what it means, and also how to apply it to the approval process and other processes. So what I want to show you is how it should look like at the end. As you can see on this screen, I've got my pending orders on the left and my completed orders on the right. And of course, as a manager or senior manager, I'd want to go into the app and view all the orders that are pending and then either hit approve or reject and move it on to my completed orders section. So what this app does right now is once I hit reject, it will move it to the completed orders as rejected. And if I hit approve, on any one of these, let's say the second one, for Samsung Series 7, I can enter an order amount of one or more and approve it, which make, marks it as approved and moves it to the completed order section with the order quantity of one that I hit, that I had approved for. Now I'm going to show you how to build this app and what sort of logics and features I used and also more on about the patch function to actually edit the data source and the database and mark it as approved and rejected with the amounts. So first off, we'll go to the SharePoint list and generally your list will look something like this. My list has the name of the order, the order quantity, the approver, and how much they approved it by as well as the status. Now we move on to the Power App. In the Power App, we're going to start with creating a simple heading for our galleries. So we'll create a label for this section of pending orders. Okay. And then just align it to the middle. Okay. And then maybe change the font size. And I got this by right-clicking the menu. And let's change the fill as well. Something a little more pleasing. Now let's put in a gallery. And what this gallery will have, will show, is our order list, our SharePoint list. And we want to add a few labels to show the order name. Maybe we want to show the price. And of course, we want to show the quantity that it was ordered for. So order quantity. There. Like so. Okay. And let me just make these bigger for you guys. There we go. Okay. So now we've got our name, our price, and order quantity, everything from our SharePoint list, all the items. Now we want to mark them as approved or rejected when the person logs in. So let's add some buttons. We've got to be inside the gallery, so click inside and then add the button. This will be a rejected button. Change the fill to red. And then we'll make a similar approved button. Okay. There we go. Next, we're going to make these buttons function. So on the rejected button, we'll do our first patch. Because what we want is to take this order, the Asus G75VW, and mark it as rejected, which means changing the status from 
whatever it was to rejected. And how we do this is we do patch, which updates our data source, provide the data source, which is our SharePoint list, the order list, and then the record, which is just a fancy way of saying the item that we want to patch. And in a gallery, that would be this item. Next, what we want to update. And in curly braces, you put what column you would like to update, which is going to be, in our case, status. And we're going to mark it as rejected. Okay. And now you'll see when I click this, it's going to do the ads. And Asus G75, if I refresh this, it's going to be marked as rejected. Now, I don't want it to be on this gallery anymore. So how do I do that? Well, I have to filter the gallery in the items property and make it show only um, orders that are have status of not approved and not rejected, and maybe just status that are blank. So what we're going to do is filter the order list where status equals blank. And we got two orders back. And as you can see, we have two here that are blank. Now I want to have a gallery here that shows the statuses that are the orders that are completed. And maybe we can move them back here to test and play around to see if our functions are working properly. So we want to add another label. Just copy this it as completed orders. Let's change the fill to blue. Okay. And let's copy the gallery. And we're going to say the items for this will be filter order list status where status equals rejected or the status equals approved for later on. Now we should get our items, three items. Okay. And to move this back to our pending, let's add an icon to like move it back. Here we go. Here we're going to do another patch because we, we want to mark the status as empty, nothing move it back to pending because pending will only show items that are empty. So we're going to do patch order list. Again, this item because we're in a gallery and we want to do it on the item that is selected. And we want to update the status column to be empty. And when I click this, you can see it moves back there. Let's move all our everything back. Cool. If I reject this again, it gets moved there. Let's move it back. Okay, so we know, we know our rejected button works, our completed orders section works, and we have the ability to move things back to pending. Now let's actually get to the approved process. So what I want to happen is when I click this button, I want to ask the user to enter a approved quantity and I want the rejected button to be gone. So on the on select, I'm going to set a variable called approve item. Approve that, which is going to be this item. And now when I click this, it's going to set approved item to be this ASUS G75, because that is the item I clicked right here. Now, rejected the visible property for this. If my approved item.id equals this item.id. I don't want it to show because that means 
I clicked approved for this item. Else, make it false, make it visible. Now you can see it's not showing. So when I click approve, it's not showing anymore for depending on which item I clicked. And of course, now I want to show my text input to have the user enter an amount to approve, as well as the approve button here somewhere that'll finally approve it and move it here to complete it with the amount that they approved for. So I want to make this approval visible, invisible as well when they click the disapprove button. So same thing, visible property will be this. The same as my rejected. And now they're both gone. When I click this, they're both gone. See? And next, I'll insert my text input. So I can ask them what amount they'd like to approve for. So the default property, I'll put empty. And a cool trick is you can go to what's called the in hint text over here and say, enter an approved approval amount. And that'll show up and allow the user to enter it without impacting their uh, experience. And next, I'll add an approve button. This will be the final approve button. So approve. And maybe I'll mark this as uh, make this blue. Right? You can see, unfortunately, it's showing up for everything. So we want it to show up when our good old approve button here is not showing. So the visible property is going to be if not visible, don't show up, else show up. There we go. See, now it's showing. And the text input, this approve will be visible only if this is visible, our text input, to enter the approve amount. So now when I go ahead and click around, you can see it's only showing up for the ones I have uh, clicked approve for. Next, I'll, let's say I enter the amount two here. Now I want to approve this Acer, Asus G75 for two, uh, two of these laptops for 1200. So on the on select, I'm going to do a patch because I want to update this order list, this item with my approved quantity of two and when the status approved. So patching my order list, the item is going to be this item or because of patch, I can also use my approved item because approved item is this item. Why? Because approved item was set by this approved button which you can see here, this approved item is equal to this, this item. So this variable is this item. So in the patch, I can either use approved item or this item, either one. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to use approved item. This helps you show that records can be collected into variables and then reused in different buttons and different areas of the app. And the update is going to be the approval date being today, the approved quantity being text input for dot text, and the uh, status finally being approved. Now I'm running to an error because as if I hover over it, you can see it says this type of argument approved quantity does not match the expected number found text. So it's saying approved quantity is a number column, but we're feeding it text. Now, how what we want to do to fix this is convert this to a number. And why this is appearing is because even though I entered the number two, it's still considered as, as a text, which means it's like this. It's showing like this, but I want it to show like this. So how I do that is I wrap the text 
the whole dot text uh, control and the output around a value and that converts it to a number. So now it's okay. And now when I press play, I'm going to approve Asus G75 for two, for two laptops. And when I hit approve, it moves it here. And let's add, so now we know it's been approved. Now let's add the approved quantity. Oops. There. And also the status, because we want to know if it was approved or rejected. So there we go. Now we know that ASUS was successfully approved by me with a quantity of two. And I can do it with anything. So let's say this Samsung Series 7 Gamer. Now you can see there is something going on here where the 7 Gamer is for 2200 and the 6 Gamer for the same price, but they ordered way too much of the 6 Gamer, which is strange because this is an outdated laptop according to this. So this must be uh, a false order, something wrong. So I'm just going to reject this. Now it's been rejected. Now what about this seven gamer? They ordered one. I'm going to give them two because I'm nice. So now I've entered two and I approve. And there we go. We got approved quantity of two for the seven gamer and it's been approved.